Hey guys, it's Julie here and today I'll be talking about the biggest point of criticism I get on my channel which is that I am a hater and I want to take away black women's rights to wear wigs. If you're familiar with my channel, you know I give commentary on things I find interesting like beauty, natural hair, fashion and things like that. Now, from my very first hair commentary video that I made that kind of went viral where I criticized a popular Nigerian entertainer who said women shouldn't wear their natural hair to our events. Wow. Don't bring your natural <laughs> hair to my event. I've gotten comments like, oh my God, women like you need to stop judging and putting other women down for liking wigs. Not everybody likes natural hair and that's that. Let black women do what they want with their hair. <laughs> Now, the video I made on the overdependence of wigs, I got so many comments dragging me as well for being a stuck up, insecure, natural hair loser. Let's take a look at them. This first one says, Stop generalizing about black women. And somebody agrees and says, Yeah, the, generali the generalization is really annoying and adding to the stereotype that only black women wear wigs and all black hair women wear fake hair. Shaming black women for wearing wigs isn't going to help your case either, honestly. I'm so sorry. Damned if they do, damned if they don't. Everything is their fault. <laughs> Jesus. Not sure what is meant by over-dependence in this context. That's entirely subjective. Okay, fair enough. Let's talk about it. What did I mean by over-dependence? I mean, if you watched that video, you should pretty much know what I meant, but I'll go ahead and break it down. Let's define over-dependence. Overdependence simply means the fact of needing something or someone more than is necessary or helpful, especially in order to continue existing or operating. Overdependence on something is never good. Another definition says overdependence is dependence to an excessive degree. Now, if you overdepend on wigs, it can make you it can make you view your own hair as less, and many black women don't know it, but they suffer from hair dysmorphia. Absolutely nothing could be wrong with their hair, but they would have a breakdown at having to go out in public with their natural hair because they are so insecure about it and expect to have everyone point at them and laugh or bash them for wearing it. They fear being overlooked, not being found desirable or worthy because of what their hair looks like in its natural state. I mean, we saw a video of a girl having something close to a crash out at having to style her hair for work and she ended up putting it in a bun only to get compliments as soon as she walked in. She even implied that possibly only black people would have issues with her hair as white people would give her compliments regardless of what her hair looks like. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to make it look presentable to the public. When at first, some of this... I can't go like this. I think my hair is only long enough to do little space buttons. Is that a bit childish for work? <laughs> what do you do? What do you think I have enough hair to do a high bun? Wait, what is that hump? Ten minutes. Oh my gosh, wait. I'm actually okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm just the only plus side is that I work with all white women. It doesn't matter how busted my hair looks. They always tell me I look nice. Mm, sorry, I'm late. I oh, like your hair. Do you? Yeah, oh, you look like... gorgeous. Yeah, I like that. Oh. I was having a breakdown this morning over it. It's so interesting to me because 80% of the natural hair experience is getting queried all the time on when you relax your hair and why your hair isn't quote-unquote done. It's these tiny microaggressions like someone saying, Wow, you're trying, oh, you're so brave for carrying this your hair like this. I could never. It's people suggesting that you straighten your hair. Some of them really honestly mean well, but we still hear these comments. Are you going to get your hair done for the event? It's done. Maybe you should straighten. It's done. I just think it would look, it's done. Mm. Maybe if you just, it's done. So you're just going to leave it like that? Mm -hmm, it's done. It just will look really, it's done. Yes, it's done. Thank you. Thank it's you. It's letting comments like this fly all the time, and then when you finally tell someone that their wig is ugly, all hell breaks loose. When you tell someone that the reason they have a mental breakdown when they have to wear their own hair out is because they are not used to seeing their hairs because it's always under a wig or a protective style, which is a logical and true statement to make, you are accused of being a pick-me and a negative Nancy. Let's check out some of these other comments. Leave black women alone. If they want to wear a wig, what does that have to do with you? Mind your own business. Can we just let black women do what they want to do? Or are we always policing black women? All naturalists thinking they're superior. It's always your own people. 
I've had natural hair for the past 10 years and recently gave up and got a relaxer. I'm so happy with that decision. I wish that we as black women could just do whatever the F we want to do with our hair without being judged. Some of us don't have time to sit and detangle our hair. Some also just aren't interested. I don't have to like my hair being tightly coiled. I can prefer having my hair straighter or looser or without blah, 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 blah. I wish folks would just let folks do what the F they want to do as long as they're not hurting anyone else. Ugh. If that woman want to wear a wig, then so be it. If another woman wants to silk breast, then so the F what? Jesus, I'm so sick of this conversation. Whatever makes them feel most confident is what I want for them. Even if relaxed or pressed, just make sure a beautician is caring for your hair is all I care about for black women. Sometimes I just let my frill or twist out fly. Other times I'm going to get the wigs. Other times it's braids. I'm going to do what the F I want to do as long as I still care for my natural hair in the process. Ooh. Some people really struggle with comprehension skills, I'm telling you. Or maybe they're too triggered and blinded by tears and rage that they jump into the comments to rant before digesting anything. Because her last statement that you should be able to wear your wigs, braids, and whatever else without shitting on natural hair and at least still having the basic knowledge for caring for your natural hair has always been my argument and viewpoint. Now, I think wigs are a great innovation, mind you. I like that you can go from one color to another and play with different aesthetics and wigs. But developing this over-dependence on them, keyword over-dependence, cannot be good for your self-esteem. It makes you idealize only straight hair, makes you lazy with taking care of your own hair, and it's very obvious how much big idealization is affecting us. I mean, now you have hairstylists who can't braid hair anymore, except it's been washed and conditioned and blow-dried and straightened before coming into the salon. They don't even think that wigs serve their own purposes. But I think somewhere along the line, we stopped seeing it as an accessory, and now they are more like an extra limb. We all know that one woman who cannot step out of the house without a wig. Normalize this. But let's check out this example of over-dependence of wig that can be harmful and toxic. In this video, this girl has gone on a vacation but had an infection or breakout on her scalp. But she still couldn't let her scalp be free from the wig long enough for her sores to heal. Now, there is nothing wrong with her natural hair. She doesn't seem to have alopecia or anything that could make her adamant on hiding her hair. It's not funny. I've woken up and I have pus all over my bed. A hairdresser put dye in my hair and didn't wash it off. And if you look underneath my wig, there's like a massive bump and there's just pus constantly, non-stop coming out. And it's just like pain and throbbing, non-stop. I wake up every day with my pillow looking like that because it's just like leaking out of my head. Not just that, but my eyes are swollen. I know I should probably take this wig off, but I don't have any other backup. And I don't really want to spend the rest of my seven day cruise in my straight back corner. Ladies, is this normal behavior? Your scalp is literally oozing pus, blood, and water. But your main priority is making sure you still have a head to put the wigs on. And I'm telling women their hair is beautiful and they have other options of how to wear their hairs without making an idol out of the wigs and destroying their real hairs and self-esteem in the process. And I'm the toxic one. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Let's read some more comments. You do you, but I'll never pretend to anyone that natural hair is easy. It's not that we don't love it, it's just that it's difficult, point blank, an all-day thing. So I can't even imagine someone with fewer means having to take care of it. Okay, first of all, you don't have to be rich to have natural hair. <laughs> like, How about black women stop judging each other so damn much and grow the F up? Y'all always worried about what someone else got on their head or if they love themselves or not. Who the F are you, Dr. Phil? <laughs> Y'all ain't gonna be doing your hair for them, so why do you even care? Me, I was a negative hater for saying more black women needed to get acquainted with their natural hair that grows out of their heads and find ways to care for and manage it, not just for them, but for their daughters. Some of you are going to be mothers with daughters that have the hair type you're trying to run away from. And what will you teach them? The same thing that has been taught to you, how to hate and change and avoid it. And it's not your fault when you're a child or coming of age or you have to take control at some point. You have to take accountability. Except you think that it's a non-issue that your daughter hates her natural hair or has no idea what to do with it. But hey, there's this whole battle, mm -hmm. you know, natural hair versus wigs or weaves. What's your take on it? Um, your natural hair is good for church programs. <laughs> your natural hair is good for when you want to pick your kids at school. Oh, wow. Don't bring your natural hair to my event. I have natural hair, but I'm wearing a wig. 
but I don't okay. have to. I can wear my natural hair if I want to go out. Mm -hmm. If mm. I'm going to the beach and I can wear my natural hair, it's mm. good for the beach. Mm. If I'm going to church, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> if I'm church, going church. to pick my, maybe going to play with my niece, it's cool. If I'm in my house, it's okay. <laughs> but why would I want to wear a nice as dress, expensive dress, mm -hmm. expensive ears? Mm. At least I'll do ponytail. Hey, I was the judgy, wicked loser trying to get black women to do what she wants them to do. Not the woman who said you shouldn't come within spitting distance of her with your ugly, horrible, natural hair. How dare you not wear a wig before besmirching her front door with your presence? No, not the multiple people that get on different platforms saying natural hair is ugly and horrible and giving you the inferiority complex you now suffer from that makes you hide your hair 365 days a year under the guise of protecting it. No, no, it's me, the wicked, the preposterous, the ever demeaning, evil YouTuber Julie, who sits and plots on the different ways to bring black women down. It's me who need to stop telling black women what to do and allow them to wear their wigs in peace. Now let's get this straight once and for all, like the wigs you wear. I'm not anti-wig, I am anti-natural anti hair community. That's two antis, do the math. There will always be certain comments and traits that you exhibit that tells me that you're anti-natural hair and that's what I speak on. Because when Sexy Red got on Beyonce's internet and posted, you carpet hoes could never because she got a seal press, she deserved to be criticized for that. Calling natural hair a derogatory term like carpet hair, that was something a little black girl could see and internalize and possibly turn into a miserable woman in her mid-30s repeating the same old rhetorics or asking women not to come to our events with their natural hairs. There will be these women slapping buzz downs on their two-year-olds and saying that the hair that grows out of their scalps is for broke people and that Asian women's hairs are the only thing that can make them feel beautiful and worthy. Let black women wear their wigs if that's what they want. The kicker is, I agree, I want black women to wear their wigs in peace. If that's what you want to do, do that. But I make my videos for the women who have gotten beaten down and beaten down and beaten down from infancy and made to believe that something was wrong with their hair and that they needed another texture to be pretty and accepted. I'm not making my videos so every black woman can march to the nearest refuse dump and give a grand old speech while crying and throwing a fist up before proceeding to dump her wig. If you feel the need to do that after watching a video of mine, hey, do you. I get it. Wigs, relaxers, and other texture-altering solutions that have been shoved down many black women's throats since the beginning of time have traumatized many a black woman in one way or the other, especially if you're a woman with tightly coiled hair. I do it for the 4C girlies, for the women who want to be a positive representation for their daughters. If you see wigs as an extra limb and not just an accessory and want to continue that way, do you. If you hate what your hair looks like naturally and you're fine hating it, do you. If you think it's no one else's problem but yours, then you're right. Ride off to the sunset with your 30-inch blonde wavy 4x4 baby thin bust down and do you. But the thing is, you have the right to say and do what you want, but when it begins to affect other people, then they have the right to speak up. I've given so many examples of instances like this. Here is Doja Cat, international superstar on a huge, huge platform and role model possibly to many young black girls saying this about 4C hair. My scalp, it hurts so bad. I had my cornrows in for three months, two months. I don't wear my hair like this because it's hard to wear my hair like this without my hair getting up. That shit is just like, I already definitely, definitely had split ends, you know? I left it in that long because I just, I don't know, I'm not saying I could be doing much more fun things than getting my hair braided, but 4C is, 4C could suck my ass, is what 4C could do. 4C could, gotta hurt my boyfriend, 4C could bend over and lick my ass. Good luck trying to finger comb it, good luck trying to put a wide tooth through it. The first couple of minutes jesus christ why even god was like let me give this 4c hair just so that she could go bald you know what i mean my falls out but i never actually look bald curly hair could suck my <laughs> i hate this bro it's not fun i'll leave my hair there's probably a one inch layer thick of residue build up oil all on myself i'm a nasty bitch i'm a nasty bitch. like i don't touch my 
love it, but what the f is there to love about my scalp feeling like it's on fire all the time? After I take my braids out. That shit hurts. I was like crying. Hair is a hairstylist berating her clients for coming to get her hair done without getting her hair done beforehand. So she's frying it for good measure. You need to make sure your ends is stretched out like this. After you blow out your hair with a blowout, you need to go over your ends with a flat iron. If you come and your hair is, is natural like this, and the ends is not like this, then guess what? We would have to reschedule, or if you really need your hair done, we would do it, but there will be a inconvenience fee. Listen, okay. this is not going to damage your hair too hard. We have, our hair can sustain anything. When That's the thing. The hate you give fussy hair doesn't just stop with you. When you talk poorly about features unique to a certain race of people and degrade it, you are exercising your right to speak, yes, but because it affects others negatively too, they have the right to speak on it. People have a right to be concerned, angry even. If you're coming on my page to say, can you just allow black women to hate natural hair in peace? Well, no. When you have on them ugly ass struggle human hair lace right there wigs on your heads and you want to call fussy hair carpet hair or write a long tragic heartfelt poem on how passionately you hate fussy hair, well, I'll exercise my right to call you a bozo. And that's that. When I make these videos, there is an influx of comments trying to school me possibly because of my accent, about the history of black hair in America and how many black women are bullied or discriminated against for wearing their natural hairs. Now, on my video titled, Ladies, maybe it's time to pull down the lace wigs. Someone commented, interesting perspective. However, you implied that the negativity that women of today still have about their hair is just an excuse and unjustified. Okay, first of all, I did not imply that. I said it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say it in those terms, but it's pretty much what the video was about. Maybe you can't relate to the experience of black American women being forced to wear their hair based on European beauty standards for over 400 years. Whereas anything else was considered unacceptable and it's still ingrained in many of our minds today due to the trickle-down effect. I wouldn't expect you to fully understand. Oh, poor me. Because apparently you didn't experience it. Nevertheless, understand the trauma inflicted upon the stolen is still within many of us, yet many have overcome. But it's exactly because of the history that comes with black hair that you have to be careful on how you pass across messages regarding black hair. Natural hair discrimination happens across African countries too. It has happened. It's still happening. It will continue to happen. I was almost refused writing an exam because I had natural hair. I have experienced natural hair discrimination on so many occasions. Thankfully, my perception of self isn't fully dependent on how people view me. If you don't criticize these things and try to tackle these issues from the root causes, how will anything change? Well, you know, people just hate my hair because slavery, racism, blah, blah, blah. And that's why I hate my hair to 600 years later. Okay, what change are you making? At the end of the day, it begins with you. The things you say, the behaviors you exhibit, your mindset. It's because at a point, black women were not legally allowed to wear their own hairs that I critique these women that get on social media and paint colorful pictures of how utterly despisable and repulsive natural hair is. It's their right to write a heartfelt poem on how much they hate natural hair and it's also my right to tell them to shove it. Enough of the sub-stories. We're done. To dial it back, here is Doja Cat complaining about people degrading her natural hair after she had come on the same platform to do the same thing and sort of giving people the green light. Now, I'm not blaming her for other people's ignorance, but at some point, you took part in it. I'm seeing a pattern. I'm seeing a consistent pattern. In my comment section of, of people saying, is, that, is my hair pubic hair? Is it carpet or is it sheep's wool? And it's not even questions. Some people are being, being like, that's what it is. But like people comparing my hair to sheep and pubes and carpet and popcorn and shit like that, like we we gotta we gotta move forward. Let's let's move forward. Let's grow. Let's let's stop. Let's let's um. Cause I can't tell you what to do. I'm not your. I'm not your parents. I'm not. I'm not. You know what I mean? I can't. Uh. But but it, uh. I don't want to say too much. I just I need. I just gotta get on that um. Not comparing four C hair texture to like. When you put yourself down purposely and constantly, you can get either of two reactions. One, people jump in to defend and uplift you immediately. 
can also be seen as you being as you complement fishing. It gets tiring and corny after a while. Or two, people join in because you have made them comfortable enough to see you as a target for their negativity. You open the floodgates to people whose parents never gave them enough love and attention growing up, and so they think the only way they can get the latter is to rage bait people with fussy hair online for some coins. Now you don't fussy hair, you have sponge heads. You literally can't style your hair. Your hair is the same consistency when it's dry and when it's wet. Your hair could damn near be as long as mine, I'm talking about down here, and your hair will literally look like you barely got anything. Cut your hair off. There's no point in growing that out. You're cooked. I mean, he's repeating what many of you gladly get online to say. I'm happy she made a hair uh, album cover, but that trap of talking badly about the hair type that already gets a lot of hate in the media is one that should be avoided. Especially when you are a global superstar with a huge platform and many black girls looking up to you. I've also been called insecure for saying, hey, your natural hair is beautiful. Textures that look like yours should be pedestalized over ones that belong on other races. At the end of the day, you have to believe you're the shit and other people will follow suit. Seriously, it begins with you. I'm not saying you must adhere to this, but just practice a little self-affirmation. You shouldn't associate your hair with adjectives such as hard, nappy, or ugly because it can distort your perception of self. How about some of us don't really care what nobody thinks? I do what I want to my head. If I want to wear it out, I will. If I want braids, I'm going to wear it. It gives policing black hair. Again, and somebody replied to this comment saying, you know, they are talking to, uh, to me, the one that is insecure and telling black women what to do. Yeah, I just wish my hair is the same as these Asian people. Nobody should care what I want, even if I'm putting on a wig. Sad thing is, y'all think that shaming people is going to make them change. You don't even realize this YouTuber's goal is to divide and conquer and you're falling for it. Um, what? Girl, bye. And then somebody said, why is the natural hair community so insecure and so bothered by what non-natural women do with their hair? If you're truly happy to be nappy, you do not have the time nor energy to be worried about those who aren't. Let those who wear wigs live in their self-hate, delusions, etc. The wig wearers are too self-absorbed to think or care about the naturalistas. But here you are, seven video to them, the critical of wig wearers. Sis, no one cares what you think about their wigs, hence they keep getting one. They'll always be one. You don't want to wear a wig? Okay, good for you. So what? Now, let's be clear. I've never demanded that no one wear wigs anymore. I've encouraged people to improve their relationships with their natural hairs and learn to love it. Have I said some of the wigs y'all uplift over natural hairs are ugly? Yes. But have I ever said, this is what I want you to do with your hair and you must adhere to it? No. I love a tasteful wig moment. Everyone does. But many of you suffer from wig blindness. You know, when you have on a wig and it's terrible, but you feel like anything is better than your natural hair, so you go with it anyways. It's because you believe that anything looks better than the hair you were blessed with and you will stand 10 toes down behind the atrocities I see sometimes on your heads. That's what I define as wig blindness. But wigs can be tasteful too. It's always a topic on Twitter about whether this is Megan Thee Stallion's natural hair or a wig because that texture is unique to black women. If someone has to say, hey, I love your wig because it's so painfully obvious. For me, it's like saying, I love your veneers. Nobody is getting veneers so you can know immediately upon seeing them that they are veneers. They want you to think it's their real teeth. Oh, where did you get your tummy tuck done? Asks a lady at a grocery store. Whole time, you're a fitness influencer trying to convince your audience to buy your weight loss plan. <laughs> that means it's not giving. It's not. For me, when it's tastefully done, it's like you keep on wondering, hmm, is this a wig? Is this her real hair? Is sewing? Clippings? That's how you know you ate. How am I insecure for saying, hey, it's not normal to get on the internet and tell us you hate natural hair with a burning passion and no girl in your clique must have a natural hair out? Am I the problem though? Am I the insecure one? Everybody who chooses not to wear wigs and rock their fro every day. Kudos to you. Do you want a biscuit now? Not every natural girlie wants to wear it that way. Yes, so people are still finding it hard to love their natural hair. Yes, people are still struggling that they look pretty with their natural hair. It's a normal feeling for many of us when European standards have always been the standard. Relax. Um, no, I won't. <laughs> and stop being so judgmental. Why don't you help your fellow sister find confidence in hair versus putting her down as if you're superior for wearing your natural hair? I'm not a wig wearer. I don't, I don't care about talking shit about people who do wear them. Does our culture depend on it? Yeah. But I think it's just a trend. Girl, you sound confused as hell. <laughs> but let's take a walk down memory lane together. 
to see just how toxic I am, shall we? Here's my video titled, Don't Bring Your Natural Hair to My Event. Sorry, I have to say it like that. The goal is not to bring about a society where all black women are forced to wear their natural hair. That is dystopian in of itself. The goal is to bring about a society where the default is self-acceptance, where wigs are truly what they are, accessories and not an extra limb, where they are a want and not a need, where our hairs are not so heavily scrutinized that we feel incomplete without wigs, where we give our natural hairs a chance and not use wigs as a default, where we don't see natural hair as cheap or tacky, where black women are no longer being denied jobs or discriminated against for their natural hairs. The goal is to be free. Not me giving a whole Martin Luther King-esque speech on how wigs weren't the enemy but the mindsets are to still be accused of being a stuck-up, insecure, nappy-headed bandit. <laughs> Look, the aims of my videos are to, one, offer helpful tips to women who are on their natural hair journey so that they can grow their hairs and learn to take care of it because I understand that many women still struggle with this. Two, encourage women to love and accept their hair regardless of texture. Three, uplift the most hated on and discriminated against hair on the hair charts, 4C hair. Four, call out on healthy behaviors and mindsets when it comes to toxic wig cultures. Five, remind y'all from time to time that most of the lace wigs are ugly and the exaggerated baby hairs are ridiculous. I mean, I just don't understand why people can't stand me, to be honest. I'm not perfect or the most intelligent to exist, but I come close. Like, come on now. If black women were allowed to do what they want with their hair, then why did the Crown Act had to be passed? Why were relaxers so normalized in our childhoods? Why are you having a mental breakdown at having to go out without a wig on? Why is your daughter wearing a wig at the ripe age of seven years old? Many people want to spend their lives complaining. It's their safe space. Ironically, it's what they are used to. Imagine a world where there is no more excuse to use on why they hate their hair. Oh, it's because my job doesn't let me. Well, they do now. Oh, there are no available products to use. Well, they are now. Oh, slavery happened. Well, it's a whole new century now. No one cares. Then they'll have to face the more obvious and true reason, which is, I just don't like my hair. I wish it was straight. Which is just honestly realized and all these strange excuses they come up with. It's much easier to form a victim club and blame the girl on YouTube for hardening your hearts against natural hair because of her harsh criticisms on the anti-natural hair community, right? If there are 40 black women in a room and none is wearing a natural hair or a texture that looks close to a natural hair, it's a valid criticism to say that many black women don't want to deal with their hair. One may even go out on a limb to say that many black women do not like their natural hair. It doesn't have to come down to self-hate, but it's still a valid observation. But white women wear wigs too. Why don't you have smoke for them? I don't even have smoke for black women that wear wigs. I simply criticize the toxic wig culture. And yes, white women wear wigs, clippings, extensions, etc. They do this to make their hair look longer or fuller. They are not trying to change the texture of their hair. Imagine a white woman having kinky clippings. She'd look a mess. And again, if black women want to wear straight hair, that's their prerogative. I have one straight hair and will still do in the future. Variety is the spice of life, after all. But it's not variety if you only like your hair when it's straight or when you talk down hairs that don't look like your bust downs. That's the issue. It's not variety when you choose to put on wigs 24-7, 365 days a year over a scalp that is oozing pus because you're possibly terrified of people seeing your natural hair. Many of these discussions are uncomfortable to have. I get it. When you've been conditioned to think a certain way, having someone challenging these indoctrinations can seem like a threat. I just seem like a dickhead on the internet who is feeling superior. And I think I'm all that. <laughs> I say many of the things I say in my videos with love, though. Even though it may not come across like that. I guess I can just sound really blunt or harsh. But I'm not intending to sound harsh. Anyways, I just wanted to come on here and quickly address the black women should be allowed to do what they want with their hair. Meow, meow, meow. That's not me. I'm not stopping them. Direct the comments at the anti-natural hair community and the mothers who put lace fronts on their toddlers and the sexy reds and the texturist folks. Not the person telling you to stop fucking whining about your hair and get a grip. I say so with love. <laughs> Anyways, that's all for this video. Thanks for tuning in. 
and i'll see you in my next one be sure to check out my other videos and do leave a like and a comment to get my video out there also consider subscribing thanks bye